Chelsea 2, Manchester United 2. Chelsea's unbeaten run does continue, but points were dropped. Chelsea take the lead in the first half, but through an absolute free goal that turned the game around, Manchester United do get back into it, even take the lead before Ross Barkley scores an injury time to rescue at least a point for the Blues at Stamford Bridge before a member of the Chelsea staff makes Mourinho absolutely lose it and it all you know, basically kicks off in the Stamford Bridge dugout. To find out everything about the game as it happened, plus what went on after the equaliser, make sure you watch all of this review. Hello there guys and welcome back to 100% Chelsea from a review of the Chelsea 2, Manchester United 2 game and um, I'm in two minds right now. First of all, I'm obviously happy because we got a very, very late equaliser and at least didn't lose but at the same time I'm annoyed because I still feel like we should have beaten Manchester United today and you know, even before the game I said the same thing. We should have beaten them and we didn't so I'm not fully happy but because of the late equaliser, the way obviously late goals are, you know, if it rescues at least a point, you're kind of happy anyway. Of course, this is the review. Um, you know, there will be fan camps, there will be a blog, there will be all sorts coming out. So if you don't want to miss out on any of that, do make sure you subscribe to 100% Chelsea. Um, and also, you know, let's see whether we can hit 600 likes or more on this video. Again, that'd be massively appreciated. So make sure you smash that like button down below. But now getting into the review and starting off by speaking about our lineup. And it was pretty much as expected. It was obviously the 4-3-3. Kepa, Aditha, Balaga and goal. Back four of Cesar, Azpilicueta and Marcus Alonso as the two fullbacks. Antonio Rüdiger and David Luiz as the two centre-backs. A midfield three of Jorginho and Golo Conte and Mateo Kovacic. And then the wingers being Eden Hazard and William actually again over Pedro and Alvin Morata started up front the only interesting thing on the bench was really Ross Barkley making the bench even though Sarri said yesterday that he was out you know injured basically but he made the bench anyway and Mourinho on the other side actually on paper put out a pretty attacking you know 4-2-3-1 lineup with Rashford and Martial either side in a midfield three of Matic, Pogba and Juan Mata but at the end of the day, it really wasn't that attacking, especially in the first half. But getting into the game, early on, United did actually try to press us quite a bit, which forced us to play, you know, the ball long quite a few more often than we'd like. But only when we had the ball in our own half, you know, once we entered their half, they just sat deep in a 4-5-1 formation. But still, you know, we had more of the ball and tried to take the game by the scruff of the neck. But, you know, while having a lot of the ball, we struggled to get our front three on the ball in the final third. And that obviously then made it difficult for us to create chances, which were generally a rarity, especially in the first half. We're just under 20 minutes played. We finally got Aiden Hazard on the ball more. Um, he's very much seemed to be man-marked by always one of either Ashley Young or Nemanja Matic, depending on where Hazard was on the pitch. And, um, you know, he finally got into a good position towards, you know, that period of the game. But we didn't really create any real chances from it. But a low cross by the Belgian in the 20th minute that didn't find the blue shirt was then kind of lazily just played out for a corner by Luke Shaw. And from ver that very corner in the 21st minute, the beast himself, Antonio Rüdiger, made it 1-0. Um, great delivery by William from that corner. Rüdiger and Luis kind of working together well, if you will. Rüdiger running around Luis to block off and, you know, get away from Pogba, who was... Look, seeming like mark, uh, marking Rüdiger for the corner. Pogba generally very slow to get after him. And um, the German ended up with a completely free header right between the penalty spot and the six-yard box and headed it in, basically unsavable for David De Gea. But other than that, it was generally very few chances in the first half an hour. One half chance for United. That was a poor header by Lukaku that went wide. And really, only our goal was, you know, by Rüdiger was the only chance we had, to be honest. With just over half an hour played, Alonso actually found himself inside United's box with a top-class, over-the-top ball by Rüdiger flying onto him. The Spaniard just about onside, but had to properly stretch to even try and control that ball but his touch wasn't great and the ball basically fell straight to the Hale's hands if he controls that better he's basically one-on-one -on -one with the keeper but you know I'm not criticizing him for that that was really difficult to control obviously and for the rest of the first half United was just scrapping this pressing us in our own half that they did early on and really just locking we were just really just locking them in their own half and they were just defending with every man behind the ball and then trying to hit us on the counter if they ever did win the ball back basically but no chances were created for either team and that was basically half time of one nil like I said, United set very deep and were mostly out to stop us from creating and scoring. And to be fair, I mean, they kind of did that well. Should that be on Manchester United play? That's a different discussion. Um, but, you know, they did that well. We only had one shot on target and that was our goal where, you know, they just defended very poorly that set piece. But, you know, I mean, I suppose we at least had another five shots that didn't find the target while United only had one shot and that, you know, just went wide. I mean, we had 60%, 63% of the ball and won just about more duels, you know, in the first half with 51%. 
But still, it wasn't the perfect first half, not a greatest game of football either, but a solid half, you know, and going into the break with the lead is obviously always decent. And even the second half started quite well with a good chance for Morata only a minute into that second half, a great charging run by Jorginho, and then a good pass to De Spaniard, whose first touch wasn't great, you know, wasn't perfect, but that actually ended up helping him because he managed to turn Matic with the poor touch, took it round and took the shot with his weaker left foot, but didn't get enough, get enough power and he didn't place it far enough into the corner and, you know, and so just made for a fairly easy save the hair nothing difficult for him then only a minute later it and as i got into the box crossed the ball and as the ball you know basically left his feet ashley young absolutely clattered into him and i'm never sure on situations like these because these things are never given as penalties but if hazard has the ball but young misses the ball while tackling him like that that's a penalty without doubt so why is there a penalty if you're tackling basically without the ball like but these these things are never given so i'm i'm, I'm, re I'm always confused by these things i basically never see them given and He's just absolutely clattered into him. I mean, Hazard was down for a bit. It was fine. But, like, how can you just clatter into someone just because he crossed the ball? Like, it's not like he shot and he scored anyway. And then, obviously, you don't give a penalty. But he crossed. No one got in the end of it. And then she just clattered into him. How is that not a penalty? I don't get it. And then in the 55th minute, you know, after obviously missing the chance with Morata and not receiving the penalty that I think we should have had, even though I know a lot of people will disagree, United equalised to make it 1-0 with an absolute free goal. Like, absolute free goal. Alonso... You know, headed across by United away, but only as far as Mata inside the box, who got his shot away on the volley. Kepa did well to keep that one out, but it fall, you know, fell basically straight back to Mata, who ran out wide to basically pick it up again. Crossed it back in while Alonso was still down, like he stayed down injured basically in the middle of the box. Um, you know, Kovacic, well, first Luis got on the header, then Kovacic cleared the header, headed it wide basically to clear it. It fell to Ashley Young, I think it was, who took the you know, basically, you took the, the, the clearance by Kovacic on the volley to basically shoot. And um, that shot then took one, if not two, deflections and fell right to Martial, who was stood right over the still, you know, injured and on the ground lying Marcus Alonso at the you know edge of the six-yard box, controlled it and put it in from close range. And, you know, like I said, absolute free goal. Alonso down injured, you know, kind of clearing the ball. They're not clearing the ball and falling to Ashley Young, takes on a volley, deflections, and then... Basically, Alonso's just lying there injured and Martial stood standing over him and scoring. And I don't really, I don't even really know what to criticise about it. I mean, Rüdiger possibly could have been on Martial because he was the closest to him, um, you know, as the shot by Young came flying into the box. But, you know, if Alonso isn't down on the ground, we most likely clear that without any major issues. It was, like I said, absolute free goal. But after that equaliser, we lost our cool and we lost our composure. Way too many misplaced passes, misunderstandings, too rash sometimes, and just letting United into the game more and more. And also, you know, they start to be positioned a lot higher up the pitch and be more aggressive in trying to win the second ball. And, um, you know, that made it very difficult for us. I mean, we actually did create a few more kind of chances anyway. I mean, David Luiz found himself with a good heading chance with just over an hour played following another great set piece delivery by William, this time a free kick. But Luiz put the header just wide of the far post. Then in the 69th minute, Ross Barkley came on to replace Mateo Kovacic just after that. Golo Conte, you know, with a great shot from about 25 yards well outside the box, which forced an absolute top-class save by David De Gea, and he really needed that to keep, you know, that shot out of great effort by the Frenchman. But then in the 72nd minute, United actually took the lead. Alonso followed, I think it was Rashford, I, th I think it was Rashford, followed him basically um, down the wing, basically, as Rashford came deep to receive the ball, basically just let it bounce, and then went on a run, you know, which Alonso apparently didn't really fancy, because by the time he started running back, Rashford was also a good 20-25 yards inside our own box, which obviously then left our left hand completely open. Mata used that and moved over there, received the ball. Luis rushed out from his centre-back position, tried to clear the ball, but Mata just about toe-poked it past Luis, and Luis missed it and was basically stood you know, off the pitch. And then obviously Mata squared it back to Rashford, who then squared it again to Martial, and Martial, to be fair, did really well to step it around as uh, Quetta, yeah, and curled it into the bottom corner. And it's just really annoying. I mean, it was lazy by Alonso, I think. There, it was lazy by Alonso. Not great by Luis either. If you if you storm out like that, you just have to get the ball. Yes, you know, Mata just about took the past him, but he can't let that happen. It's a bit like when a goalkeeper comes out for a ball, comes out for a cross. If he does it, he has to get the ball. Otherwise, it's a mistake, basically. And that's what happened to Luis, and it's obviously frustrating. Pedro came on to replace William, basically with that goal in the 78th minute. Olivier Giroud came on to replace Murata. 
and you know after that United just threw everything they had into the ball for a lot of the second half generally but especially after that obviously so many shots and crosses we had block good ones as well like especially by Hazard by the end of it United were just wasting time and not doing anything else I mean fair enough why wouldn't they but you know as the opponent is obviously really annoying and I was already basically I already lost hope in all honesty but in the sixth minute of injury time Ross bloody Barkley thank god for you Ross Barkley popped out popped out by out of nowhere basically and made it 2-0 a crossbar Spilicueta on his weaker left foot actually towards the far post like well past the far post was met by an unbelievable header by David Luiz like when I say unbelievable I mean out of this bloody world he took basically just a run up jumped over everybody and just headed that with basically an unseen power for a header if you will but he didn't get it in you know obviously because Barkley scored not Luiz but it hit the post basically the far, the far post on the other side again and um, it bounced back into play. Really got onto it with his head. But then the Haya pulled off an incredible save. And I was already losing it again. But then Ross Barkley popped up as the ball obviously bounced back into play from the Haya save. And Ross Barkley just stepped it in from close range. And, you know, you'd obviously think that was full time, wouldn't you? But it wasn't. You know, as we scored, someone from the Chelsea staff by the name of Marco Ianni, who turns out to be Sari's second assistant coach, stormed out of our dugout, basically, and celebrated Barkley's goal by with multiple massive fist bumps with the air. I'm not sure if that's the term. Um, but basically doing that right in front of Mourinho. And as Yanni then walked back towards the Chelsea dugout, towards the Chelsea bench, Mourinho absolutely lost it, looked at him, lost it, jumped up and basically stormed after him. And um, then Jose got pinned against, you know, basically the wall by the end of the tunnel, basically, and by security. Then Chelsea and United staff stormed in there to basically calm things down. And then even the players got involved, like Giroud and Barkley and, you know, all of them. They were all storming in there. I mean, nothing happened. No one was being aggressive there after that, you know, obviously after Mourinho was calmed down. And, um, you know, everyone was just calming things down. It wasn't anyone, you know, throwing punches or anything crazy like it was against Tottenham a few years back. But, you know, it was still a bit of a madness. That was basically it because, you know, after that whole kerfuffle, the final whistle still hadn't gone, actually. But, you know, obviously, then it took another good two, three minutes for the kickoff to basically happen for Man United, obviously, after we scored. But then it just happened one long ball by United and that was then it. And um, overall, I'm still not happy with the results. Like, like I said in the beginning, of course, I'm happy that we at least got the point with obviously a last minute equaliser. But I feel like we should have beaten United, especially the way they were in the first, first half. And that's what I find the most frustrating, that we weren't good enough to break them down better and create more actual real chances. Like in that, we just weren't good enough. Overall, we just weren't that good. Like it wasn't a ma a, like a tactical master stroke by Mourinho, but I mean, I suppose him and United got the job done. I mean, well, the job of keeping us from winning, they got that done. They didn't win themselves. I mean, yes, it took an absolute freak goal for them to equalize and turn the game around, you know, not just score-wise, but also mentality-wise. Like I said earlier, we kind of lost it there for basically the rest of the game. Only, on, only in injury time, basically, we got somewhat dangerous again. Like, it was just, it's just frustrating. Like, we, I think we had it in us to beat them today and we just, we lacked that edge, basically, if you were. I mean, we had 21 shots, six of them on target, seven shots and four on target for United. I mean, a lot of our shots were blocked. Like I said earlier, United were blocking a lot and, um, you know, that's why the big number of shots, it, it's not like we actually put 15 shots wide of goal. Like, a, a lot of those shots were blocked. Um, and obviously, you know, there were three goals in our, three shots in our equaliser. So, you know, the number stacks up. But still, it's just frustrating. I mean, whenever we do not win, I usually have the same thing to criticise so far this season. And, you know, apart from individual mistakes, of course, it's always a lack of movement, in my opinion. And I stand by it. I mean, I think we miss Pedro's direct runs. William, William always runs out wide. Like, he always runs wide of the fullback. And um, that doesn't really do that much for us. Yes, it stretches the opponent, and I get that. But for that, then Kovacic and our other midfielders don't push into the box enough to actually make use of that. Because it's good to, to you know, stretch the game. But only if you then fill the box with other players. And if it's only Murata in there, and only maybe, you know, the, the other winger, that there's, there's not much use to that at all. Like, you, you're not going to, especially when the opponent sits so deep, you can try to cross the ball. If they're in there with six or seven players, and we're in there with two, we're, we're not, we're not going to win the ball. So all the stretching is kind of a bit useless if... The midfielders don't push up more. And Pedro's runs are more direct. They're more diagonal towards goal. And I think we could have done with that today. And also, you know, I like Kovacic. On the ball, he's very good. His passing is solid. His, you know, his running and defending is actually very good as well. But he just doesn't get into the box off the ball enough. He actually, once he gets the ball, he likes to dribble towards that direction. And, you know, tries to create. But not off the ball. He doesn't move there enough for me personally. And I think Barkley does that a lot better. And, like, Barkley's a lot more likely to get us goals and... You know, it's just it's it's just frustrating. Like there wasn't enough movement, there wasn't enough 
sometimes a little bit of intensity. So yes, there were individual mistakes, but from both teams, you know, Pogba did really poorly for them to concede the first goal, basically. And of course, it's annoying, but like I said already, you know, the most frustrating thing for me is that we couldn't break them down and just win, basically. <laughs> still, our unbeaten run does continue. You know, we're basically, well, by the end of October now, we're still unbeaten in all competitions, so you can't really argue with that all that much. But you have to expect Liverpool and Manchester City to go above us now by two points, but winning today, I mean, you'd have to expect that. And also, you'd have to expect Arsenal and Spurs to catch up with us by winning, so, you know, basically be level with the teams in third now. Which is obviously a bit annoying, but still, it is a very good start to the season, and, you know, we move on, we go on to the next game, we go on to Bate Borisov in the Europa League on Thursday, and we are nowhere near the finish you know, article of Sari at Chelsea, of Chelsea under Sari. We're not even close, trust me. And it's going to be good. It's a bit of a frustrating day. At least we didn't lose. You know, we got the late goal. Thank you for that, Ross Barkley. But yeah, that's really it for me. Leave me all of your thoughts on the game. Then in the comments section below, anything you have to say, leave it down there. And like I said in the beginning, let's see when we can hit 600 or more likes on this video. That'd be massively appreciated. So make sure you smash that like button down below. Of course, don't forget to check out my social media, which is last 50 to 7 on both Instagram and Twitter, as you can see over here. And also the links to both of them will be down in the description. So if you could follow me over there, that'd be massively appreciated. And of course, this is YouTube. So if you haven't already, do make sure you subscribe to 100% Chelsea. And also don't forget to hit the notification bell button. But yeah. Thank you guys for watching, up the chills, upwards and onwards, and I'll see you next time.